work being done is the where the energy of electrons, and I don't know if it's so necessary to write this down. I'm not going to ask you to regurgitate this on a test or something like that in detail, but I want you to see the complexity of it. Inside of the mitochondrion, okay, the mitochondrion is like this thing, looks like this, and it's got a membrane inside of it. I'm going to make it very diagrammatic. Okay? Inside of the membrane of the mitochondrion are things called hydrogen ions. Hydrogen ions are basically just protons. Actually, if you know anything about chemistry, that a hydrogen atom has one proton and one electron. And so then a hydrogen ion would have one proton and no electron. So that's all it is. So there's more of them here than out here. This is called the inner, this is the outer membrane, this is the inner membrane. So these have to be pumped to here. And they, the mitochondria uses the energy of those electrons to do that. Okay, and it creates something called a concentration gradient, which we talked about before in diffusion and osmosis. Okay, a concentration gradient. And then diffusion of those back across the membrane powers something called ATP synthase. And I'm just going to show you what this is. Okay, again, it's not super important that you understand everything about this for this class. Okay, so ATP synthase is a molecule inside of every mitochondria, lots of them, that makes ATP. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. It's really pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool. And the last st stage thing here, here says oxygen is the final electron acceptor. It's, and I'll kind of explain this at the end of it, at the end when we get there, because it's important to understand that if you rip something apart, Okay, so I rip a book. So you eat your candy bar and you digest it and it goes into your cells and the sugar molecules are all torn apart. All of those parts have to go somewhere. Does that make any sense? All of the parts that come off of that have to go somewhere. Otherwise, in every cell, they'll just build up and build up and build up and build up and build up. And when we talk about how many actually this is, we're talking about, you know, if you think about it, you break down a candy bar. I don't know how many, how much food you eat. I don't know what the number is for the amount of food somebody eats in a year. But it's tons. Okay, and if all that stuff doesn't go somewhere, and no, it doesn't all go out your anus, that's only the stuff you don't use. Okay, all that other stuff is in you to be used for energy and all that. We have to put that all somewhere including the electrons that are ripped off. And in this case, they're used for energy. And in this case, it's oxygen that they're used for. Okay, I'm going to show you a, a bit. This last one is actually a video of how this works. And it's really, it's kind of an overview of the idea of a concentration gradient and then ATP synthase. If there isn't enough oxygen, then something called fermentation happens, and we're going to talk about fermentation after break. So we get 36 ATP for glucose. The electrons that are used for the energy that the energy source is. Why do we need oxygen to pick up the electrons? Pick up the electrons. Pick up electrons. Okay. Everybody got that? Fermentation, as I said before, it is something that's used to make alcohol, but it also happens in your muscles. And later on, we talk about how you get in shape and all that. We'll talk about fermentation. So, Kathy asked before, 
about what's the real totals, what's really going on here. Now let's talk about this in your bottom and apply this to your muscles because I think you'll find this interesting if nothing else. We said that, well, you need to know this. Every muscle cell uses about 10 million ATP every second when it contracts. Every muscle cell, don't, time out, time out, don't write this down. This is informational only. Every muscle cell uses about 10 million ATP every second. So if Jordan's in wrestling practice and he's uh, running you, carrying that weight over their head that I watched him do, okay, that they are contracting a lot of muscles to do that. And at full contraction, that every muscle cell is using 10 million ATP every second. That's a crazy number when you think that hey, you only get 36 ATP out of every glucose molecule. Okay, we said that one glucose molecule yields 36 ATP. Fortunately, one gram of glucose yields 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, right? That's the, that's a mole, right? Avogadro's number. So, in a gram of glucose, well, how much is a gram of glucose? Well, I related this to, well, so that each gram of glucose produces about 21 non-alien ATP. A stick of Twizzlers, a full stick of red licorice contains six grams of glucose. Okay, now I'm going to, you know, one of the big, long Twizzlers, which I'm a big fan of red licorice. Okay, six grams of glucose. So from that one stick of red licorice, you get 120 non-alien ATP. Okay, now hold on. You're, so you're using every muscle cell is using 10 million ATP per second. How does that, well, from that one stick of red licorice, I did the math for you. That's enough energy to keep one of your muscle cells going for 38 billion years. So when we're talking about what's going on in your cell, we're talking about that in every cell, when you break down a glucose molecule, you get 36 ATP, those little spinner things are spinning. Those little spinner things are spinning really fast. Because you can train your muscles to keep up with that demand for a while. Right? You can train your muscles to keep up with that demand for quite a while. So that means that, okay, in one stick of red licorice, you have enough energy to keep a muscle cell going for 38 billion years. So why do we have to keep eating? We have a lot of muscle cells. And it's not only muscle cells that need ATP. One-fourth of all your energy is used by this organ. The brain. The brain. So... You know how some days you feel tired when you're done with a test, like fatigue, like if you say, well, my, I'm mentally fatigued. You really are. You really are. Because when you really think hard, you goes up to about one third of all the energy your body uses. So, yeah, you're made of lots of cells. So many cells that a stick of red licorice is not nearly enough to get you through a day. Well, it wouldn't be the first day, but why? Why can you go a day without eating? You store energy. That's right. And it's not just it's not just fat necessarily. Okay. In fact, you can go weeks without eating. You can. Okay. Your body will just use other stuff like muscles for energy. That's why those starving people are so skinny. You're like, well, no kidding. They're not eating. Yeah, but they're losing muscle. They're so skinny because their body has used their own muscle for energy. Yes? 